do you drive on the freeway? Well, <laughs> well do you I don't, drive? I don't, I don't like to drive on the freeway, but you don't like driving long distances. You nah. do it because you have to. Yo, what's going on? This is another Chanel and Duke episode. I'm Duke. And I'm Chanel. And welcome, welcome to our channel. channel. You guys saw in our last video that we did where we were quizzing each other mm -hmm. that was really fun mm -hmm. for the both of us and I'm pretty sure you guys enjoyed watching that but today's episode we're gonna be digging deeper into really more details about our relationship because these are questions that are coming directly from all of you we took the time to ask you guys to give us some insight on what questions you want to know more about our relationship about us and you guys gave us a lot of great feedback. Yeah, yeah, so based on the last episode, you guys asked us a lot of surface level questions and it was really focused on how well we know each other, mm -hmm. right? Who knows who's better, it was a fun way to do that. But you guys also asked a lot of questions that were great that we wanted to serve you guys and answer the questions in another episode. Also, that's why we're doing this. So our man Jamie is gonna be asking us questions that you guys asked us, and uh, we're gonna try to answer them to the best of our ability. Yeah, this okay. is all freestyle. We did not, we weren't prepping ourselves for these questions. We kind of saw them briefly and was like, oh, this is a good one, oh, this is a good one. So it's really just a chit chat session with us. And yeah, just get to know us better. Yeah. Just get yeah, to know us because better. Because we are family. Like I said, me, both Duke and I are on this continuous, consistent journey on YouTube. Yeah. And we're building up a family connection with you guys. And a lot of that starts with just us getting to know each other. So okay. sit back, relax, yeah. grab your partner, grab your friend, whoever is around you, and let's enjoy this video. All right, so Jamie, what's the first? Let's do it, let's do it. How long can you go without seeing each other before you get frustrated that you haven't seen each other? We've been living together for um, two years? Over, th over two years. Over, o two, over years. two years. Yeah, so I see him every day. <laughs> we, we see each other every day. Yeah. I feel like, I, I wouldn't say either of us gets frustrated um, because it doesn't happen, but I do, I would say that if I'm kind of gone a little bit too long out the house, oh. right? Or maybe if I'm filming and I've been filming longer than expected to, Right, she probably will feel a little, uh, not necessarily frustrated, but she'll feel a, like little, a, bit, a, bit, a hint of sadness maybe, because <laughs> I'm not around and um, I would feel that when I got home. Yeah, you know? so, so what I should have said is that even though we do live together, um, there aren't long periods where we don't see one another, but um, in terms of like days, but there yeah, right. are certain times, Hours. certain yeah, certain time frames within the day where it's like, oh, I, I had to go to do this, that, and the other, right. and it's like, oh, I haven't seen you all day. Yeah. So like, where like where are you at? What are you doing? Type of thing. Yeah. And I miss his presence a lot of the times when he's out of the house, especially when it starts to get dark outside. Yeah. I don't know, I'd be like, where where is he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't call it a frustration thing. No. But it's, uh, it's definitely a feeling. Uh, not to add on to that question, you know, has there ever been a time where you spent days without like physically being in each other's presence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been, there's been, uh, last year when I went Ooh, to Nigeria. Yes, right? yes. So there's been two, two times, two times this has happened. Last year when I went to Nigeria, I was gone for like 11 days. And then earlier in the year, last year, she went to Bal she went to Maryland and then New York where she was gone for like 10 days. So yeah. we definitely spent some time away from each other. I think that for, you know, for the time that she was gone, and, and she and she could speak on the time when I was in Nigeria, but the time she was gone, you know, you don't realize how connected you are to someone until they're like, you don't have access to them 24 seven. You know, I was always the type of person that felt like, well, I mean, I could use my space, you know? <laughs> and like, I was gonna be fine, but it does, there was a little bit of sadness. There was a little bit of separation anxiety because there's someone that you're used to and that you just do day-to-day -day life with every day. And um, when they're not there, it kind of just stops, you know? And throws part of that, yeah, it throws you off in that. And part of that is my fault because, you know, the 
reliant on someone's presence to function. I'm not saying I can't function, but it definitely um, throws things off. Yeah. Yeah, I think that when Duke went to Nigeria for the 10, 11 days that he was gone, it was really tough too because it was around Christmas. Mm -hmm. It was it was right around Christmas. I, we didn't spend New Year's with each other also that year. Um, so I was really, really sad. Like I, there was times when I was home and I would be crying because he wasn't there and I was like, what is happening? Like, yeah. I feel like I can't live without this person. And um, even though it was such a temporary moment, I think the holiday season made it a lot more challenging for me. Yeah. Um, well, luckily my best friend came in town and she spent some time with me. But what, what I took from that moment and that, that time was just like, I need to learn how to be comfortable without Duke. You know what I mean? And it was kind of like uh, an aha moment for me because I was like, this is the first time me living with a man that I'm in a relationship with and I became so reliant on you. Yeah. So I kind of had to get to a comfortable space. Sometimes you can fall so easily into relying on the person that you're with, your partner. Um, so I, from that experience, I got more of a balance and I figured out, okay, like, it's okay. Like, it's okay, he's coming back, you know, and, you know, thug it out. Yeah, I think the thing to take away from it is just kind of stay occupied. Yes. Right, just figure out things that to stay helps. occupied, work on your job, work on, go work out, do things that mm -hmm. kind of serve you. I yeah. think that helps. Uh, next question, how often do you both sit together and have an intimate, deep conversation about your relationship? Man, you wanna take that? Um. I'll let you start and I'll throw some <laughs> sauce on it at the end. Well, we don't have planned intimate conversations, you know? I think that- We used to? We used to have like designated times of, of the month where we have conversations about how we can better serve each other, how, how we can be better in our relationship, you know what I'm saying? So there were specifically, uh, we specifically put them in place to just get ahead of any problems that may, may arise in the future, right? Because it's very easy to think that we're just all doing well and just going with the motions and think mm -hmm. that just because no one's saying anything, there's no problems. So we created this space to be able to um, talk through things, you mm -hmm. know, or have uncomfortable conversations just because it makes it more, it makes it easier to just like put things on the table, right? I wouldn't call them like deep, intimate conversations, but meaningful like discussions, hard conversations that we are having. When I think of deep conversations, I think of like, just like thought provoking, just random conversations that go from one thought to the next. That's why I think of deep, intimate conversations. I don't know how often we have those. I think those just kind of come how we feel. Yeah. Um, but as far as the monthly check-ins, we haven't had that in a while, which we need to get back to but we definitely mm -hmm. did schedule those things once a month. Yeah, I think that um, as far as the, the deep conversations go, they definitely weren't planned. And I, when I think of deep conversations or just like a lot more thoughtful conversations, I think about the monthly check-in conversations mm -hmm. that we used to have. Right. That was something that we were really strict on and stuck to. But you know, life happens and we got really busy this past year so we definitely like you said we'll have to bring that back at the start of the new year but i think that um one thing i became really comfortable with is anytime that i am feeling uneasy about something or uncomfortable i just tell duke like hey sit down for a second i think we need to talk about something something's on my mind and that can come at any time i really don't in our relationship i really don't hold back um because like I said, when you live with someone, you have there's no escape. You know, you have to learn how to be around this person when you're feeling uneasy or upset. Having those deep, pressing conversations are are mandatory at, yeah. at all times. So I think I think it's important to just like delineate the types of conversation we're talking about, right? That when we talk about deep conversations, there's the there's the deep conversation um, in terms of yo, we need to talk about something to work on ourselves right and work on each other or get to get down to something and there's a deep conversation it's just like yo like what do you what do you think the world's going to be in 50 years you know and things like yeah. that and that's a whole different 
type of conversation. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to those conversations, honestly, like my threshold for those conversations are much, is like high, right? <laughs> I could talk all day about that stuff. Chanel can like talk for like a 30 minutes and be like, okay, like what's next, you know? And I can really just talk and sometimes I just don't know yeah. when to be quiet about it. But um, yeah, like the recent thing I said to you wasn't so deep, but I was like, we, we passed an older couple on the street while we were right. driving. And I was like, right. wow, like we're really gonna get old and yeah we're gonna get old one day <laughs> yeah she was talking about how we're gonna get old and like how it's crazy to see that people are old older walking around mm -hmm. that were once you know five-year-old kids and seven-year-old yeah. kids running around yeah. and, and how the world is just a cycle so what boundaries do you guys have around social media in your relationship and with both of you having such large following has it ever caused issues Ooh, yeah, that's a, a good question. question. So check this out. I'm, we're going to answer this question, but we're definitely going to have an episode dedicated to this topic, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just too much to unpack and like just with one question. Yeah. But we definitely have boundaries in social media and uh, because, you know, we, we understand how how real social media can can be um, sometimes and how even though it's it's not like a real tangible thing, it can affect real relationships. So we have to have just kind of rules and boundaries in place to kind of serve as a guideline on what's okay and what's not okay. Otherwise, it'll be a free for all. It'll be a free for all, right? And we'll, there'll be nothing that each of us can grab and say, hey, look, this is what we agreed on and this is what you're not doing, so you're wrong, right? Or you're right, right? So if we don't have those boundaries, it's just so much gray area, right? And when there's gray area, it's confusion. You know, and it's very easy for each of us to say, well, I didn't know or, you know, this or that. But when we kind of put those guidelines into place, you know, it's very black and white for us. So if she's doing something or she did something on social media, I could really re refer back to what we put in place and we can't question that, you know. Yeah. So definitely that. Yeah, I think that um, boundaries are so important, so needed in friendships, relationships, family relationships in all areas of life, business relationships. And so we definitely have that social media conversation, have had that social media conversation. And uh, luckily for us, it's not something that is an issue or that comes up often at all because we kind of like set the bar with like, this is what I'm comfortable with, this is what I'm yeah. not comfortable with. Right, right. Um, and I know that one, I'll throw out one boundary that I think we both pretty clear on is just like, one thing that Duke has told me is, and one thing I respect, um, not only for him, it, for him, but for our relationship, is no booty shots, like no full-on ass shots in the in the camera, you know. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's one boundary, right? We we would consider that. Yeah. A so yeah, that's definitely a boundary, right? It all like comes back to like your two people as individuals and what you guys want together mm -hmm. and making sure your morals and how you guys conduct your relationship you guys are on the same page and you guys are operating with the same bandwidth right because it doesn't work if you know i feel a certain type of way and she feels a different type of way right but we have that conversation early on in our relationship to see if, if it works and then okay we're on the same page we think the same let's move forward mm -hmm. all right and if i say okay what are exact boundaries right it's important for us to be clear on what exact boundaries are right i understand and it's not talking about it's not an insecurity thing or a controlling thing it's just understanding you know we have to respect each other in private in public on the internet as well yeah right even when we're not in each other's face yeah. uh so you are right. She's a she's a, a fitness influencer, fitness coach, right? Her her image is important to her. The way she looks uh, makes her money, right? She understands how important it is to be influential with women, mm -hmm. and how um, how emp empowering you know being proud of your body feels, you know. So like I understand the concept of you know I need to show that like the work that I'm doing and show my body, right? Not one to to show other people what they can do and inspire other people, but two, just to feel good about myself, right? I understand that's the actual thing that everyone yeah. wants, right? But then there's the other side of it was like, yo, sex does sell, right? And sex is, right, the, the sexual, your sexualization is okay and you should be able to use it tastefully, right? And you should be able to use it tastefully. So like when I say like no booty shots, 
That's not something I just said, I'm not doing. I'm saying, like, hey, this is how I feel about this and this is why, mm -hmm. right? Why did I say no booty shots? Because you can convey the same message without, without that. You can convey that I'm sexy and I'm pretty and I'm in shape and I work hard, right? And I have a nice figure. You can convey all those things without, you know, making your ass the center of focus, right? Yeah. Because what it does is, it just sends off an inviting message, right? That's just one boundary. Yes. You know, and, it's just one boundary. And in that same way, um, because I know a lot of people have their own opinions about this, um, we are all saying these things that work for our relationship. Right. And in that same right, I would not want to see Duke's name. You know how Instagram does that thing where it says Duke and others like this picture? I would not want to see Duke's name right. under a photo of someone who is showing their ass right and that's um, right <laughs> and that's just that's just that because it does it opens your mind into different places that are not really conducive to your relationship and because that is something that is all over social media and to each his own absolutely but for us those are the boundaries that work yeah so that's just one small snippet. Like Duke said, we can unpack this in a whole separate episode. Yeah. And comment below if you want a whole different episode about the details of our- the Do's and do nots yeah, of our do, social media. Do's and don'ts of, of social media in yes. our relationship, something like that. But yeah, that's a small snippet of our boundaries. You need them, okay? <laughs> How do you feel about one another working out with the opposite sex? Ooh. Have one. we spoken about this? Well, how do you feel? I think that I'm cool with it if, if it's a friend, if it's someone that I know, if it's someone that I've been introduced to, vetted in a way. The, the tough thing about this question is that we both, we work out with each other. Like we're, we're, we're each other's workout partner in many ways, right? So if Duke knows one of my guy friends and I say, hey, I'm gonna work out with him, which I've done before, it's, it's all good. But if it's this random guy that I just met in the gym and it's like, hey, I'm gonna work out with Tommy, it's like, who is this guy? You know, so I think it's really important first to have to make sure that my partner is has some sort of relationship with this person where he at least knows who he is, he's met him before, you know. So there has to be a little bit of a vetting process beforehand before I can just be like, before I'm comfortable enough to be like, hey, I'm working out with this random guy that I met in the gym yesterday. Yeah. So that's how I feel about it. How do you feel? It's not, this one, this is not as black as white, black and white as it, as it should be, but I'm okay with it, right? For all the same things that she says, if I know a person or if she kind of, even if I don't know the person and she just comes to me and say, hey, like this guy is the, I not work out with this guy at the gym and he wants to do a workout video together for Instagram purposes, then I would say, okay, cool. Like that's that's what it is, you know. Me personally, I don't. It would probably be more problematic for me to work out with a girl because there's no reason. Like I don't get. I want to get motivated from working out with a girl. Like sure. a girl. Like I don't really know too women, too many women that could push me in the gym, you know, or right. that. That's a good point. Or that, or that, think about that, or that can spot me, or that can teach me different exercises, or yeah. that have you know, that have connections to gym or that own gyms or, you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm less likely to be in a position where, mm -hmm. you know, I need to work out with another woman. Like the only logical reason that I would be able to be working out with other women is for like, you know, social media cross pollination, like a followers type of thing to mm -hmm. grow following accounts. But other than that, you know, I wouldn't personally, yeah, like I just don't feel like me personally, I get anything I don't, there's no benefit, like direct benefit that I get from working out with a woman. If I want to work out with someone, I'll work out with her or I'll work out with a guy that I actually want to be pushed by. How do you communicate when you're at odds with each other? Yeah, man. So, so we actually, we actually recently just had a disagreement, you know, and um, we had a tough, tough conversations. And a lot of times it just depends on, like the way the conversation goes kind of depends on what's going on in our life, you know? So if we're having a bad day or we're in a bad mood, the conversation could go a little left, you know? But if we're both feeling pretty good and pretty calm, then the conversation can go calm and smooth and it can actually feel like a conversation. But for the most part, we try to just have productive conversations, you know? And 
And as hard as it is, it takes a lot of practice for us to get to that point, right? So early in the relationship, we had uh, differences in the way we, we, we grew up and the way we communicated things, mm -hmm. right? Things. I was a little more patient and wanted to talk things out and she was a little bit more just a rat, emotional and didn't really have had at that point experience a relationship where you know we can actually talk through things like yeah. adults you mm -hmm. know so um, we've talked about a communication book before right where we have this book in our house right where it's in the kitchen where we both can see it every single day mm -hmm. and if we can't bring ourselves to have a, um, a, a conversation in, in person and express ourselves, we just put whatever we're feeling in the book, right? I read it, I take my emotion out of it, I read it without her emotions being in it, and then I digest it and say, okay, let's, let's, let's figure this out, you know what I mean? So that's one thing and one way we kind of overcome difficult conversations. Yeah, I think that um, for me, what was really a game changer in our relationship was the communication book. Um, like this, like Duke said, this book is a book where we communicate all things, good, bad, ugly. And um, I really took advantage of the opportunity to say, hey, like when, when this happened, you know, this is how it made me feel. And I'm having a really hard time getting over these feelings. And so that would allow him to read what I said, maybe reprocess what was what happened and then at some point in time later that day later that night we would have an actual conversation yeah. um, and I think that over time doing that in addition to just having these difficult conversations I was able to get to a place where I could even if I was feeling uneasy or just not so good that day listen sit down we need to have a conversation so practice makes perfect yeah. Um, and figure out different forms of ways to communicate, which sometimes people writing out their feelings actually works. Yeah. So don't don't sleep on that one. And you guys have heard this before, everyone's heard this before, but when you argue or have moments of disagreement, the reason that those things escalate and the reason it's hard to, to solve is because both people are operating from ego and both people are operating from I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, and no, mm -hmm. nothing matters, and I just want to be right, you know. So it's it's like there's a problem, but you guys are ignoring the problem and fighting each other instead of fighting the problem. And it's still a learning process for us, and we, mm -hmm. you know, still go through our struggles where we, you know we can't figure out to how to just like argue or or um, have different disagreements that that come and go quickly. Yeah. You know, but it's always important for us to remember, man, that. You know, it's us against the problem, and not us against each other. Yeah, you know, that's a good one. You know, and if if it's if we always remember that, yo, it's you and I against the problem, then it's gonna be you and I trying to come up with a solution. You know, instead of you come up with the solution or you come up with the solution. Yeah, I want to give a quick moment to give Duke his flowers oh, baby. Um, because oh, he baby. has really he oh, has really baby. led help lead me into a space where he leads I follow in a lot of ways and you know sometimes that happens the other way around but I do allow him the space to lead us in many moments and he's led me into a space where our communication is a lot more seamless and fluid in those moments when we are disagreeing on things um, and I've learned a lot from him about how to communicate your feelings in a lot more of a calm manner or respectful manner and I want to give you your flowers on that because <laughs> because you know I had a little bit of a rough time I'm a little bit of a princess um, and I just didn't have experience with how to do that in um, uh, nice and neat way. Hello. So. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Nice and Neat the podcast. Yes, if man. you guys aren't already tapped into Duke's podcast with his two friends, Jalan and Omar, Nice and Neat the podcast. That's a really great podcast, especially for men to listen to because they have a lot of deep, thought-provoking conversations surrounding how to become a better man. We're gonna drop it in the comments, drop it in the description, so check it out. We're about to wrap this up, but before we get out of here. Jamie's gonna take us through a lightning round and we're just gonna, he's gonna spit the questions out as mm -hmm. fast as possible yeah. and then we're gonna answer it as fast as possible. Who says I love you more? Ooh. Who has the best taste in music? 
<laughs> it's more stubborn. It's <laughs> cleaner. I think I'm. I think she's. I think I'm tidier. I think she's cleaner. Okay, that's a good. I think I'm, okay. I'm tidier. Like my stuff is like. Yeah, organized. I was gonna say his stuff is really organized. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I do. As far as like her bathroom, she's cleaner bathroom all the time. <laughs> what better taste in fashion? I think Duke's style is more versatile, but I think we're both fashionable. You just want to give me this. I, I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm well, more well traveled. More well traveled. I'm more well traveled. Mm -hmm. I don't travel anymore without her. Who was <laughs> <laughs> the first to apologize after an argument? I'm pointing at myself. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Who was louder? Who was louder? Yeah. <laughs> Despite what it might look like, this voice goes up. Oh, that's that's tough. Uh, that's, yeah, that's tough. We we'll work out. We, we're very competitive about I think, it. I think okay, honestly, I think I'm a little more obsessed with working out though. She loves working out, but I'm I'm like overboard sometimes. Yeah, so he could get tired. Yeah. We'll most likely will take a long drive. Do you drive on the freeway? Well, <laughs> well do you I don't. Drive? I know I don't like to drive on the freeway, but you don't like driving long distances. You nah. do it because you have to. Because of the, the way our setup is. Okay. So Duke gets that, actually. Who's most likely to do the grocery shopping? <laughs> Who's most likely to make a big purchase? <laughs> Who's most likely to strike up a conversation with a stranger? <laughs> Who's most likely to eat the last piece of pizza? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I love it, he will eat my. I'll I'll put it in the fridge, and he will eat my pizza, my <laughs> last piece. Oh man, oh, man this but, was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. But yes. guys, I thank you. We thank you for tapping in and tuning in with us. Man, believe me when I say, man, we are grateful for everyone that just is tuned in and that's just following our journey and that yeah. just rocks with us and that just supports us and shares everything we do and. When you guys see us out, sometimes people come up to us and say, man, we, I, I love what you guys are doing. Sometimes when I'm by myself, people will come up to me and say, hey, man, I love what you're doing with your girl. Mm -hmm. You guys are inspiring. Um, so every single one of you guys that have been rocking with us and that are watching this channel and have gotten to this point in the video, um, man, thank you. But, yeah. um, keep rocking with us. Keep making sure you're tapped in. If you liked this video, please, please like right now, comment, and make sure you are subscribed to our channel. And don't forget to turn on those post notifications somewhere right. by hitting the bell at the top somewhere, right. somewhere. <laughs> so that you know when we post videos. And yeah. we'll see you guys in the next episode that's right make sure you're following chanel on instagram oh yeah right make sure you're following uh myself uh, chanel delisser at chanel delisser on instagram it's gonna be in the description mm -hmm. and then follow myself on instagram at duke you can also follow my fitness uh page at duke your nacho fit you can Sir. also follow shop coco fit right <laughs> at coco it's fit. all in the all, bio all just, just right head to there. instagram check us out man but uh with that said man we're gonna holler at you guys later man thanks for joining us peace and love